Citizen Co. and the Bing Lounge. Hey, welcome back to Kink, and <laughs> welcome to the Bing Lounge. I hope that you're enjoying it here. Oh, it's beautiful. It's yeah. very nice. Yeah, it still feels like brand new stuff. Uh, you just got in from New York, what, last night? Yeah, I flew and, in last night. Yeah, uh, and like today, you're really dodging a bullet. It's a perfect day in Portland, and it's just sweltering in the city. Well, I, I really <laughs> like the hot, hot, hot weather, so I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm glad I'm here, but. Uh, yeah. It hasn't been hot in New York really this year, so there's been a lot of rain, so it doesn't even feel like summer yet. Uh, yeah, well, I guess it, you, you lucked out today because we've had the same situation here in Portland. <laughs> 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 it's great that you're coming, uh, especially uh, for a trip here uh, to Kink and the Bing Lounge. I wanted to just catch up in case there's somebody in the world who doesn't know Clarence Greenwood, a.k.a. Citizen Cope. You began about a decade ago, this modest self-release, uh, and just what I consider to be this uncompromising kind of path to developing and getting the word out on your music, and that's how fans flocked, right? Well, it's just been a, a really good, you know, chance to write music and produce and go out and play shows. So, like, uh, I just consistently made records and consistently toured and people uh, enjoyed the music. So I had kind of a different path than a lot of other people w who might have sold a million records on their first record or whatever. But I've just consistently grown with it and uh, just been real fortunate to be able to play and, and uh, sing and still do it. Yeah, I remember that very first time you came to our old studios and it was just in a funky little room. So we've kind of been growing right along with you and that's why it's extra specially wonderful to have you here. Uh, when you look back on that decade, does it feel like it's any easier? I mean, you know, are you, are, d d the doors open a little bit quicker for you? I just think it's always, a, it, it's always a, you know, everything is a, is a constant, like something else to do. There's always another step to take. So it's not like um, there's things that are, that you look back and go, oh man, I can't believe I did that and that and that. But you know, you had to do them to get to the next step, so. Yeah, uh, and, and I wanted to pick your brain just a little bit about music making, because when I look at when you got going, uh, you know, now there's this really big wide range of, of uh, guys and girls kind of doing that mashup of hip hop and, and folk and blues and rock and that whole thing. But you were kind of, you know, in my ear, you are pioneering back in 2002. Uh, what are the challenges, uh, you know, in this world of downloads and, you know, ridiculously easy access to free music, uh, you know, and the economics of, re you know, getting an album out there and touring? What are the challenges for you? Well, again, it's just something that you have to consistently, you know, every day you got to do something because it's it's always challenging. You know, the, the you know, the industry has been decimated in a lot of ways and there's a lot of companies that have become very successful and been, you know, kind of on the backs of content and music. And um, I don't know how to divide it. And I just know there's a lot of people that, you know, kind of struggling, but I've been very fortunate because I, like I said, I've, you know, I've toured and I tour like not just major markets, small markets, and people have heard the music. And right when I first came out, I used to give my CDs away. And that was like, before anyone was doing it. So it was people were saying, are you crazy? And I would give the whole thing out because it was my option to give that record out because I thought it was a better thing to do than just say, hey, go to a store and buy it. Especially if I saw you on the street and you you know knew me or whatever, or even or just- see the show or something. Or in yeah. passing, you yeah, know, yeah. so, and we started, you know, on Clarence Greenwood recordings right when the record came out. You know, I felt like on the first album, there wasn't a lot of buzz going and there was no reason, way to get it out. So. Even at shows, when we would come, we would, you know, prior to the album being released, we put the, um, we give the give the album out. So I think there's some credibility to being able to give music out, but they got to figure out how to do it, um, you know, without. <laughs> <laughs> but but like, I, well, but make to make a long story short, yeah. I've been really like, because the way I tour, but there's not a lot of people that can tour and also physically do it because it's it's a physically challenging thing to do i mean some very big artists can't you know that had huge records really can't can't do it and yeah. and you're, you know, you're a guy that can just go out with his guitar too that which makes i can it, do that and i can do it with, with the, the band, band and yeah and, and yeah you know. i also wanted to give a, a a shout out to in the last couple of years you have your own record label you can find artists that you love 
yeah. and produce them and produce your own records. That gives you some un uncompromising abilities, you know, to do your thing. Yeah, it's just it's just just different way to do it. Instead of doing it where you get in advance to do a record, you kind of pay for it yourself, but then you own it forever. So right. it doesn't. I kind of like that. Yeah, and uh, One Lovely Day is your new album. So did it end, ever end up on that epic action film? <laughs> it was like, a, it was just in it for a second. I was supposed to even be in the movie, but they the, cut. We're talking about Battlestar. Anybody they, here seen that cut, film? They cut the, the, you know, the best acting, you know, over the last <laughs> 25 years probably yeah. compared. It's, it's so My fun. Marlon Brando yeah. moment, they cut it out oh, of the movie. Man. On the cutting room floor <laughs> with Citizen Cope. It's so funny to think that a movie like that would take a song like that because it's kind of ironic and poignant, you know. To well, it, you know, the, the the director is is this guy Peter Berg has done a lot of stuff like Friday Night Lights, and he's always been a fan. So we came out to shows early on. Cool. And I loved I loved his movie actually. I thought Friday Night Lights was a really deep depiction of West Texas football and and. I knew a little something about it, so I thought it was um, not the TV show. He directed the film, so it was like he he started coming to shows, and then he called me when he was doing the movie. And he's like, "I need you for this, da 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 da, and be in this and this this graphic sex scene. We need oh, you." Oh man, will you ever forgive him for dropping you out of the film? <laughs> Oh, but seriously, One Lovely Day, the new album, is going to be coming out on uh, July 17th. We're looking forward to that. Uh, and uh, September 30th, you'll be actually coming in for a proper show yep, at yep. the Crystal Ballroom. So uh, much to look forward to and the new album coming out. Meanwhile, a pleasure again, Citizen Cope, having you in the bang. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for having me.